single image object counting and localizing using active learning. In Bar over Man Spiegelbass and Ranan Fatal from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. The goal of our work is to count and localize repeating objects. Let's say we have this image containing multiple repetitions of cells. We would like to output such an image that localizes each repetition. You can see them in purple dots. We also support counting and localizing various types of repeating objects and doing it using the input image itself without additional images or any pre-trained model. As our network gets labeled via active learning procedure, we restrict ourselves to have minimal number of queries and minimal user interaction. Here is the overview of our work. In general, our method is iterative and collects labels for training every iteration. More specifically, given a single input image, we train a CNN to output a map with positive and negative values, where zero is the separator between objects and non-objects. For this training, we use few locations of objects and few locations of non-objects as labels. You can read in the paper how we initialize these labels buckets. We collect potential locations of the repeating object by considering only the positive pixels of the network output. Then, the queries that are presented to the user are a subset of the potential locations. They are marked by green or red frame, depending on the tentative label obtained from the classifier being trained. The user is required to click only on the misclassified windows. This reduces the user click number dramatically. The user input yields positive and negative labels, and the iterative scheme can be applied again, starting from A. Similarly to other interactive schemes, this loop is repeated until the user decides to stop. Then, the final object occurrences are the potential locations. I need to clarify two more things, how we train the network and how we select the queries. We use a fully convolutional network with three hidden layers, which is trained such that the pixel values in the locations from the positive bucket will be high, one, and in the locations from the negative bucket will be low, minus one. As for the query selection scheme, we start with the potential locations, and the goal is to pick the locations for user annotation that are most informative for training. Asking for user input on informative queries leads to an effective training and minimum number of queries overall. In the first step, we split the potential locations into two groups, ones that are related to the positive labels and the others that are related to the negative labels. This is done by considering distance between each potential location and the labeled pixels. Then, for each group, we apply clustering and restrict ourselves to ask the user over just one location from each cluster. This avoids querying multiple locations, which the network finds similar. How do we pick these unique locations? We compute the distance between every potential location and its closest labeled pixel, and at each cluster, we extract the farthest location. In this way, we avoid querying pixels, which are similar to ones that were already labeled. The novel key in this work is that we use the latent space for any distance measurement. Hence, we assume L2 distance in the latent space is a reliable visual measure. This is quite true, but we further confirm it by introducing an additional loss. We restrict the latent space of the positive and negative labeled pixels to be mapped to two disjoint groups. The entire loss for training the network is the summation of these two losses. In order to evaluate our method, we conducted a user study. We collected 33 images containing various types of repeating objects with considerably varied number of repeating instances. We asked 30 participants to use our method and two other interactive counting methods. We report various counting and localization measures, along with number of user clicks and session time. As you can see here, our method has half the counting error percentage on average compared to the competitive algorithms. In terms of localization error, our method also achieves the best accuracy by a large margin. Additional information about the algorithm details, the user study, and more evaluations can be found in the paper and in the provided supplementary material. The dataset we collected is also available online. Thank you.